Hi, my name is Isabel Jackson, and this is my class presentation for my course delivery class. Um, I was supposed to be on shift today, but I have COVID, so here I am recording it from my house. Anyway, my lesson plan was on ladders, and it is aimed at a very basic recruit class. I decided to do this because we are currently hiring about 100 new employees per year. Um, so that means three to four recruit classes going through our department at a time. And I felt like ladders is one of the basic components that should be taught in recruit class. And it's definitely a good platform for building into scenarios in the future or into their company drills, um, it can definitely be built upon. The students for this, uh, I'm gonna say about 30 students per class. Um, the strategy that I plan on using for this class is a in-class portion with a PowerPoint and then a couple handouts. So when I have handouts of um, the pictures of the different types of ladders that we have and then the ladder parts. And then the students will move outside and they will get to see a demonstration by the instructors on how to raise the ladders, carry the ladders, and go over all the different parts of the ladders. The grouping for this, it's going to be heterogeneous as most of our fire department classes are mixed that way. We have a, a lot of different people mixed together in our companies, um, new employees with seasoned employees. And I just felt like that was, that's what you're gonna experience throughout your entire career working here. So it, there's also, it's also very hard to differentiate between how much experience somebody has and um, what kind of experience that person has. So that's why I decided on that. The timing for this class, I felt like we could get this class done in a day, possibly less. Um, the classroom portion maybe will take one to two hours. Um, demonstration outside, you know, an hour or two, and then skills practice for the students. Um, obviously, this is weather permitting for outside. We won't be doing this if there's any lightning going on or thunderstorms. Materials needed for this class, uh, not too much. We need a PowerPoint, a classroom, handout sheets for the students and then outside we're going to need extra instructors so we can keep a good span of control five to one so i'm going to say if we have 30 students we're going to need at least six instructors um, we're also going to need to have available each of the different ladders that we carry in our department to show all of the students to be able to go over and have them identify and then for their practical part, they're going to be raising the 24 foot extension ladder. So if we can have at least two of those, possibly four, that could be four different groups on different sides of the building working on that, that would be good. Um, I'm going to require all the instructors and students to be in full bunker gear with the helmet and gloves on for this. Success for this class is going to be um, nothing too extensive, no written test. I don't feel like they need that. Basically, you can quiz them on the different parts of the ladder and then more from a practical aspect of watching them perform things. Are they carrying the ladder safely? Are they looking out for obstructions? Are they raising the ladder and lowering the ladder in the correct manner? and are they doing it safely. The sequence for this class, um, I, like I said in the beginning, this can be built on. Um, for today, they're just going to be raising the ladder and lowering the ladder and carrying it. For the future, there's uh, a lot of different 
scenarios that the ladder can be used. For a fire scenario, we can raise a ladder for a second means of egress. We can also have a rescue profile with a VES from the second story where we need to use a ladder. Um, we can also have scenarios in the future where we need to bring down an unconscious patient from a ladder, for example. And the rationale for doing this class is ladders are an extremely important part of our job. They um, are definitely very important on the fire ground. We want to make sure we always have two means of egress. We definitely need to be able to perform a VES if that's if there's a rescue profile when we pull up on scene and um, that's something that we can address immediately, throw a ladder, get in, get somebody out, and then the fire attack team can worry about putting the fire out. So my objectives for this class is the students will be able to identify and correctly label the different parts of the ladder. Um, I want the students to be able to pick the correct ladder for the task at hand. So do they need a roof ladder? Do they need an extension ladder? I want the students to be able to demonstrate correct carrying, climbing, raising, lifting, lowering, and footing techniques for the ladder. The students will be able to demonstrate correct placement of the ladder for rescue and for firefighting operations and the students will understand the correct climbing lab, uh, angle, and the students will understand correct ladder maintenance and the importance of taking care of, care of their ladders. Sorry, I have like a sore throat. But. So, the first thing we're gonna go over is the different types of ladders that we have at Palm Beach County. Um, one of the first ones is a roof ladder. This is a single flat ladder, has hooks on the top. The hooks are used to secure the ladder when working on a pitched roof. Um, we also have some small folding ladders. They are generally on the back of the cab of a lot of engines, or they could be in the side compartment. They're not on every single engine, but this is for a first floor VES. We have some single straight ladders of different lengths. These are usually carried in the ladder trucks and the platform trucks. And then all of our regular engines have a root, a, next to the roof ladder is a 24 foot extension ladder. We do have some 35 foot extension ladders, which are the three fly sections, one base and two fly sections, and these are carried on our ladder trucks and platform trucks. And then all of our engines also carry a small attic ladder which folds side to side rather than over the top. Um, these are good for small spaces, like an attic, obviously. Okay, so the next part we're gonna go over are the different parts of a ladder. The beams are the side of the ladder. This is the main structural part that the rungs are attached to. The base is the bottom part of the ladder. It's usually the widest section of the extension ladder, and this goes towards the ground. The butt is the bottom feet of our ladder, and this goes into the ground. The tips is the opposite, which is the top. The dogs are the locking devices. Uh, these attach on the inside of the beams to an extension ladder, and they hold the fly section in place. The fly section is the upper part of an extension ladder and this moves to extend the overhaul, overall height of the ladder. The halyard is the rope which we use to hoist the fly section. And then um, all of our ladders have heat sensor labels on the side of them. They will change color if your ladder gets exposed to excessive amount of heat. So it's important to check those. We have hooks on the top of our roof ladders, which is to hook onto the top of the roof, on the pitch roof, this is. And then the rungs are the cross members, the actual steps that you're climbing on. 
Next, we're gonna go over some safety. Um, so it's important when we're working with ladders and we're practicing, we wanna make sure that we have on all of our bunker gear, um, including our helmet and gloves. You need to make sure you're using proper lifting techniques. This means bending with your knees, uh, using your legs and not your back. Try to keep your back as straight as possible. Do not raise the ladder near any electrical lines or over any other kind of obstructions. You wanna look around your surroundings, make sure that this is a safe and practical place where you can raise your ladder. When using the two-person carry for a ladder, the person in the back is gonna give your commands. They're the one that, that can see everything. If you're in the front, you can't see what's going on behind you, so it makes sense. The person behind is the one that's gonna give the commands. Um, we wanna make sure that we are using our correct climbing angle. This is around 75 degrees. Make sure you don't overload your ladders with excessive weight. So depending on which ladder you're using, how many people are there, you wanna limit how many people are climbing the ladder at one time. And we also wanna inspect our ladders for damage or any wear. This should be done in the morning with your checkout um, but it's also a good idea to check everything after you've used them. Ladder maintenance. This, again, is an important part, keeping your equipment clean and ready to go. We want to make sure that our ladders are free of dirt and debris. We want to inspect them in the morning. You want to look for any loose parts, any frayed halyard, damage, missing tips, or the feet missing, this can cause the ladder to slip. We don't want that. Um, any heat damage. Our ladders are tested. Um, you wanna check your department SOPs. Um, this will be professionally done. This is not something that we have to do, but you need to be aware that it needs to get done. We are not allowed to paint our ladders. We are allowed to put small marks where we rack the ladder up on the truck. That's okay, but you're not allowed to paint a part of your ladder. You don't wanna expose your ladder to a lot of heat or exhaust. So just be careful where you put your ladder down. Don't put it right next to the exhaust of the engine or somewhere hot. Don't place your ladder over a part of the building that's on fire, that it's gonna get exposed to heat. Be careful with that. Okay, so the next part is our ladder placement and climbing. Um, when we are placing a ladder for a rescue, you want to place the tips even with your windowsill or just below it. When you're going in to rescue somebody, you're gonna be climbing over the ladder and if the tips are sticking up into the window, that's easier for you to get caught up on. So you wanna make sure that they're down below that. If you're going to be using a ladder to climb onto the roof, then you wanna raise your ladder three to five rungs beyond the roof edge. This will give you some area to step off and then also some um, something to hold on to kind of once you're up there. The optimum climbing angle is 75 degrees, so you want to try and come as close to that as possible. Obviously, if you're bringing down a very large person in a rescue situation, you might want to put a, uh, a, a more uh, wider angle to make it a little easier. And then you also want to place the ladder, make sure the ladder is in a good spot. So if you have a, if you have a house on fire and you see somewhere if you have, they have a balcony, this can be used as a place of rest, refuge. So it's a good idea to place your ladder at a window because if somebody's upstairs and they are trying to escape the fire and they can get to that balcony, they can get outside and shut the door and they have an area of safe refuge for a short period of time. You can always move the ladder to go there. 
if they are coming out of a window, obviously they have nowhere to go except for down. So it's better to have that ladder there at that window for them. You want to make sure you always secure your ladder. If you have an extension ladder, you want to check, make sure your dogs are locked. This you can look and you can hear and see. Um, you also, the instructors will go over this when you practice. You also want to make sure you tie your halyard. You want to pre prevent the ladder from moving. So it's, if you have the person there, extra personnel there, you want to have a firefighter foot or heel your ladder for you. Obviously, on a real life fire situation, that person may not be available to do that, but in training, you definitely can utilize somebody for that. Um, you want to ensure that the ladder is placed evenly on the ground so your tips aren't rocking against the building. So just look at your footing. Uh, on the ground, you don't want to have one one in like soft soil, the other one on concrete. Get them both on the concrete or both in the soil. So have it even. Um, then we're going to move outside, and the instructors are going to demonstrate all the different types of ladders that we have at Palm Beach County. I want them to go through all the different parts of the ladders. They're going to demonstrate different methods of carrying. We're not making you carry a ladder in a particular way, but we're just going to show you the different techniques. Obviously, there's different size and abilities of different people, so different techniques work for different people. We have um, on top of the shoulder, we have a low shoulder, we high shoulder. We also have a two-person carry. If we're using the 35 foot extension ladder, you possibly want three people for sure, but definitely two. The more people you use, the easier it's going to be. The next part is the students are going to get to do some hands on practice. Um, we're going to practice skills, starting off with tying the halyard. Um, they're going to practice the different carrying techniques both the single and the two-person carry. Then they're going to practice raising and lowering the extension ladder and putting that ladder up to the correct placement, whether we say it's for a rescue or a roof operation or uh, for hose management. So depending on the task that's assigned, they're going to practice practice raising that ladder to different heights within the window or roof. And the students will also practice healing the ladder while another firefighter climbs that ladder. Um, the students will have plenty of time to practice this, and then once they've practiced all these different individual skills, we'll have them practice removing a ladder from the truck, carrying it, raising it, putting it in position, and then footing it for someone to carry and then correctly lowering in the ladder and bringing the ladder down and putting it away. And that is going to be it for my lesson. And sorry if my voice is a little funny. Um, it's the COVID. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Oh, that was really long.